monsters. Big ferocious beasts with sharp teeth, plenty of horns, living on the land, up in the air, or deep below the sea. The Bible describes many creatures that seem like something out of Tolkien. You know, the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, that kind of stuff. I'll just stop myself there before I'm accused of committing blasphemy, but it's true. Descriptions of what seem like monsters are found all over the Bible. Revelation chapter 13 says, Then I saw a beast come out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, and on its horns were ten diadems. Diadems are like crowns. And on its heads, blasphemous names. The beast I saw was like a leopard, but it had feet like a bear's, and its mouth was like the mouth of a lion. Thank you to Francesco Vecchioni for suggesting the topic of today's video. Before we get started, please like and comment. Hold on to your butts. The Book of Job, the story of a God-fearing man who had everything, only to have all of it taken away by Satan. The story does have a happy ending as God restores all that was taken from Job and then some for remaining faithful to him. What does this have to do with monsters? In this story, God speaks to Job and during this dialogue, he describes two creatures, the behemoth and Leviathan. Let's start with the behemoth. Here's the biblical description. Look at behemoth, which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength it has in its loins, what power in the muscles of its belly. Its tail sways like a cedar, the sinews of its thighs are close-knit, its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs rods of iron. It ranks among the works of God, yet its makers can approach it with his sword. The hills bring it their produce, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the lotus plants it lies, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. The lotuses conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream surround it. A raging river does not alarm it. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge against its mouth. This description has led many to believe that God is describing a hippo, an animal that feeds on grass like an ox, hidden among the reeds in the marsh. Hippos like to stay in the water. Their skin tends to dry quickly if they're out of the water for too long, so this description also makes sense. Other interpretations have linked these descriptions to the elephant, as the name behemoth implies a creature of large size. Now here's where it gets interesting. Creationists, those people who think that the world is 6,000 years old, they believe that the behemoth was not a hippo or an elephant, but instead a dinosaur, a sauropod to be exact those long-necked dinosaurs. Why? Their main argument is in verse 17. Its tail sways like a cedar. Now here's a picture of a cedar tree. Here's the tail of a hippo, the tail of an elephant, and lastly, the tail of a sauropod. Which one do you think would most likely sway like a cedar? The only problem with this interpretation is that dinosaurs have been extinct for millions of years. If this were true, it would imply that man lived amongst dinosaurs, or that this behemoth was one of the last of its kind. Either way, it's an interesting interpretation. Moving on to the Leviathan. It's described in the book of Job, verse 12, I will not fail to speak of the Leviathan's limbs, its strength and its graceful form. Who can strip off its outer coat? Who can penetrate its double coat of armor? Who dares open the doors of its mouth, ringed about with fearsome teeth? These next descriptions are a little more intense. Verses 18 says, Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like the rays of dawn. Flames stream from its mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from its nostrils as from a boiling pot over burning reeds. Its breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from its mouth. Many assume that this is a crocodile, but the last time I checked, crocodiles don't breathe fire. Another variable that debunks this crocodile theory is this verse in the following chapter. He makes the deep boil like a pot. He makes the sea like a pot of ointment. He leaves a shining wake behind him. One would think the deep had white hair. Now what could this mean? If any of you have been on a ship or even a small boat, you'll notice that as the boat is sailing, it leaves behind a white foamy trail. For a foamy trail to be left behind, something massive would have to be piercing through the water. But how many crocodiles have you seen disturbing the water enough to make it boil like a pot? So maybe this was a prehistoric creature. Not likely. How? 
because the Hebrew translation of the word Leviathan is Leviathan, and Leviathan is derived from the root L-Y-W, which I will not pronounce, which means twist or coil. What's the most well-known scaly animal that can twist or coil? Snakes. So if the Leviathan was real, it would have to be some type of sea serpent. It would also have to be a creature that can breathe fire. Now there are creatures that can spit burning substances, take the bombardier beetle for example. It has the ability to squirt enemies with burning chemicals, or a better example, spitting cobras that spit venom. But clearly, this isn't a creature that spits acid. As it says, its breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from its mouth. I don't know about you, but this is either a metaphoric creature or it's truly something we have yet to discover in the animal kingdom. But whether you believe in that stuff or not, it seems pretty far-fetched to classify this thing as a simple crocodile. Well, there you have it, folks. Bible monsters. What do you think these creatures are? Were they once living, breathing titans that roamed the earth? Or maybe symbolic creatures with a deeper meaning? Personally, I think it'd be way cooler if these were actual mega animals than a hippo or a crocodile. That concludes our biblically accurate trilogy. Let us know what you want us to cover next. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe to 3TAS and click that bell icon for more content like this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. This has been Jonathan from 3TAS.